When comparing players in sports, we often like to use data to see who's a better athlete. But those comparisons can often be a lot less straightforward than we think. We're going to look at a particularly tricky example today using the tools we have for describing categorical data. Today's lesson is on describing categorical data. We're going to talk about the Aces basketball team today. They're a WNBA franchise that moved from San Antonio to Las Vegas in 2018. And that first year they came to Las Vegas, 2018, they kind of, well, sucked. They came in last place in the Western Conference that season. But then that same year, they drafted the first overall pick in the WNBA, Asia Wilson. Wilson joined Kelsey Plum, a fellow all-star, to make for a very dynamic duo on the team. And by 2022, they were the first pair of players to score 700 combined points in a season in the WNBA. They set the record. And that same season, they won the WNBA titles. They went from last place to winning the title. So let's talk about both these players. First, let's look at some gameplay tape from Asia Wilson during that 2022 season. Come Friday. This is the matchup we came to see. Two of the best players in the world in Brianna Stewart and Asia. Contact. That's grown woman basketball right there. Oh, she got it. Already a double-double for Asia Wilson. She just recorded her 1,000th career rebound. Attempts. There's still essentially a full half left. There's... Young kicks it out. Wilson over so far, but that's her first triple of the night. So Asia Wilson is six feet, four inches. She's a tall forward that skillfully gets past defenders for a lot of shots that are close to the hoop. But she also has some range and will occasionally shoot some longer shots, which we call three pointers. Let's also look at Kelsey Plum. Let's look at her gameplay tape. First quarter, and that's one of the things Vanessa Nygar talked about as far as rebounding. Driving baseline, kicks it to the corner, plum, three, splash. And their home opener against Indiana on Friday. Plum in the corner, in the game. Atlanta struggling as far as turnovers. Towards it, two for one opportunity if Vegas hurries. Plum charges in, and puts it home. So Plum is quite a bit shorter than Wilson. At five foot eight inches, she has a much different playing style. She shoots many long range shots, but she's also able to occasionally drive to the hoop and get closer layups that are closer to the hoop. So both were nominated to be MVPs, most viral players in the 2022 season. And it came to an evaluation of who was the better player and specifically who was the better shooter. One MVP criteria is to look at each player's shooting percentage, which is the number of shots they made divided by the total number of shots they took. And if you divide those numbers, you get the percent of shots they made or their accuracy in shooting. So from 2021 to 2022, if you look at the shooting percentage for each player, their accuracy in their shots, we see that Asia Wilson made 47.4% of her shots and Kelsey Plum made 45.1% of her shots. So Wilson had the overall higher shooting percentage. However, MVP voters also like to evaluate shot type. We have to take shot type into account. Here's what I mean by that. In basketball, here's the hoop. Here's what we call the three-point line. If you take a shot between the three-point line and the hoop, so a closer shot, you get two points if it goes in. However, if you take a longer shot that's past the three-point line, so further away from the hoop, you get three points if it goes in. You're rewarded for taking a more difficult further away from the hoop shot. And as I mentioned before, Wilson usually shoots two-pointers, and Plum often shoots three-pointers. So to be fair, let's compare each player's accuracy in terms of each type of shot given their different playing styles. So here's a breakdown of the shooting accuracy for two-pointers and three-pointers for each player. And we actually see that Plum has not only a higher three-pointer accuracy, but also a higher two-pointer accuracy. She's more accurate on both types of shots. You might be thinking now, what? How is that possible? Because Asia Wilson overall had the higher shooting accuracy. So how is it possible that Plum could have the higher accuracy in both categories? What's going on here? And that's our key analysis for today. How can a player be better overall, but also worse in each category? So to break this down, we're first going to look at marginal distributions. Again, we're trying to think about how can a player be better overall, but worse in each category. To investigate this paradox, let's verify all calculations using the raw data, the actual shot data for each player. So here's the data for Asia Wilson. These are all shots that she took from 2021 to 2022, not including foul shots. So all shots from the floor. So this data is organized as what we call a two-way table. That's a table of counts describing two categorical variables. 
The two variables being described here are the type of shot that she's shooting and the shot result, whether she made it or missed it. And a good first step when working with two-way tables is to find all the totals. There are two kinds of totals, column totals and row totals. The column totals are these vertical totals. Think the Greek or Roman columns, that's a column. Rows are horizontal. Think about oars rowing a boat, that's horizontal. So we can look at the column total, the total number of two pointers that she took, the total number of three pointers that she took. We can also look at the total number of made shots, that's our first row total, total number of missed shots, that's our second row total. And we can also get the grand total, the total number of shots described in this table. To get the grand total, you can either add up your column totals or add up your row totals. Don't do it twice, just do it once. But if you do it, just make sure that they match so you've done all the calculations properly. So let's go ahead and find Wilson's overall shooting percentage. And when we're talking about an overall shooting percentage, we don't really care about the type of shot. We only care about the shot results. So what we're going to do is find what's called the marginal distribution. That's the breakdown of only one variable in this table, one margin. When you think about margins, you might think about margins on the paper. There's a top margin and a side margin. For a marginal distribution, we only care about one of those margins. In this case, the shot result margin. We don't care about the type of shot. We're just looking for the overall made versus missed. So in this case, we're going to erase the breakdown by <clears throat> type of shot, and we're just going to look at made and missed shots out of the total, overall shooting percentage. So if you want to find the percent of all her shots that she made, you take the amount of made shots, 467, and you take it out of, divided by 985 total shots that she took, the grand total. And so when we do that, we get 0.474. That's the proportion of shots that she made, which if you convert it to a decimal, is 47.4%. Her shooting accuracy, she made 47.4% of the shots she took. You can do the same thing for missed shots. So 518 out of 985, that means that she missed 52.6% of the shots that she took. And this is what we saw before. This is Wilson's overall shooting percentage. Um, and you can also verify Plum's overall shooting percentage that we gave before by getting her marginal distribution. And you can see that she made 45.1% of the shots that she took during these years. And that is verified with the numbers I showed earlier. So how can we visually compare these overall shooting percentages to get a first comparison in there? And we can do that by using a side-by-side -side bar graph. So let's visually compare these percentages that we calculate because it's a lot of numbers to keep track of. Instead, a visual can help us out. So we're taking these numbers and putting them side-by-side -side as bar graphs. Now, whenever you make a graph, you should always think about this. Title, tick, tick, label, label, label. Every graph needs a title when you make it. Every graph needs to have tick marks to show scale. And we need to label everything we need to label. In this case, I'm labeling the y-axis, I'm labeling the x-axis, and I'm labeling my color scheme for my key. So what does this graph show? It shows that Wilson had a slightly higher shooting percentage than Plum. Her 47.4% shooting percentage is a bit higher than Plum's 45.1. That's why her bar for made is higher than Plum's. Plum had a slightly higher missing percentage. She missed a higher proportion of her shots compared to Wilson. Then we can ask, what about shooting percentage by shot type, that other kind of axis that we were thinking about earlier? For that, we need to think about conditional distributions. We need to calculate the shooting percentage for each shot type. As soon as you see this kind of language, for each or among each, something like that, that means we need to find the conditional distributions by shot type. So among her two-pointers, so just among her two-pointers, conditional on her shooting a two-pointer, what percent did she make? We can look at the, the number of shots she made that were two pointers out of the column total of two pointers. So out of all the two pointers, that column total, what percent did she make? 435 out of 901, she made 48.3% of her two pointers. We can do the same thing for misses. She made 51 point, or she missed, excuse me, 51.7% of the two pointers that she took. Just as so we do this for two pointers, we can also do this for three pointers. So among the three pointers that she took, the 84 three pointers she took, she made 32 of them, which is a shooting percentage among three-pointers of 38.1%, and a missing percentage of 61.9%. So this is Wilson's conditional breakdown, conditioning by shot type. This is Plum's. If you look at Plum's raw data, you'll find these percentages. So how can we visualize this? To visualize this sort of graph, we can look at a segmented bar graph. And let's go ahead and do that for Asia Wilson. So we can look at her distribution of two-pointers. She made 48.3% of her two-pointers, missed 51.7%.
We can make a bar for how much she made. That's 48.3% as shown on the y-axis there. And the remainder of those two pointers she missed. That's the remaining 51.7% in that bar going from zero to 100% of the two pointers that she took. So we can fill in that result there. Then we can do the same thing for comparison for three pointers. She made 38.1% of her three pointers and missed 61.9%, the remaining amount there for three pointers. Again, we need to do our title, tick, tick, label, label, label. I have a title on the graph here. I have tick marks that show scale and I have labels, y-axis, x-axis, and for the key. So this was Wilson's distribution and this was Plum's distribution for shot type. And note that for both players, we see that their accuracy on three pointers is lower than their accuracy on two pointers. So we see that again, three pointers are the more challenging type of shot. That's why you get rewarded with more points. So do the data suggest an association between shooting percentage and shot type? The translation of that question is, does shooting accuracy differ by shot type? And we saw that yes, if you look at Wilson's graph, for example, her shooting accuracy is lower for three pointers than it is for two pointers. It differs by shot type. Same thing for Plum. Her two, three pointer accuracy is lower than her two pointer accuracy. So when asked about association, and we want to point that out, we need to do three things. We need to make a claim saying there is or there isn't an association. We need to support our claim by comparing percentages between groups. And we need to include context, which means mentioning the variables in the problem. For comparing, note, you have to use comparative language, like higher, lower, or similar. That so here's how I would answer that question. Shooting accuracy is associated with shot type. For both players, three-point accuracy is lower than two-point accuracy. For example, Wilson made 48.3% of her two-pointers, but only 38.1% of her three-pointers. So I have a claim. These things are associated. I have context. Shooting accuracy and shot type are the variables being described here. I have a comparison. Three-point accuracy is lower, that comparative language. And I'm comparing those percentages, 48.3% compared to 38.1%. So now we can ask the main question we start out with, who's the better two-point shooter? Who's the better three-point shooter? Well, in both cases, if we look at two-pointers, Plum had a higher shooting percentage for two-pointers. She made a higher percentage over two-point shots. So we can see that Plum is slightly more accurate than Wilson along two-pointers. It's very slight, but it's there. And then among three-pointers, Wilson had a fairly much, a, a bit higher accuracy on three-pointers. Still not incredibly that much higher, but more substantially higher than among two-pointers, she was the more accurate shooter among three-pointers. So we now run all the numbers using the raw data, but the paradox remains. Wilson has a higher overall shooter accuracy, and Plum has a higher accuracy by shot type in both shot types. So how is that possible? Why is Wilson more accurate overall, yet less accurate in each shot category? explain how that could be possible. And here's a hint. Here are two mosaic plots describing each player. A mosaic plot is the same thing as a segmented bar graph, but the bar widths are scaled by the sample size, the number of shots in each category. So on the left is the mosaic plot for Wilson. On the right is the mosaic plot for Plum. And so the discussion question remains, why is Wilson more accurate overall, yet less accurate in each shot category? explain and pay particular attention to this mosaic plot and what it might be showing you.